Hey guys, this is Jason with Jason's Works. I wanted to do a, a video uh, showing the starter kit that I have available. Uh, these tools are designed to, to have a person get started making coin rings. I've been asked a lot lately about uh, what tools people need uh, to get started. So uh, with, these, with these tools here, you'll be able to uh, punch a hole, fold the coin, and stretch it using the Durston stretcher and then also reduce it to the size and shape that you like. So with that, let's get started. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a ring and I'll talk, talk to you about it as I go through uh, and I'll be using the tools in the starter kit. All right. Okay, first step is to anneal the coin. Now for this, you'll want to wear your safety glasses, of course. And I like to wear a, a nice leather apron. Um, It'll be uh, basically softening or annealing the uh, coin. This is a 1943 walking Silver Liberty. And because it's minted, it's been work hardened. So we want to soften that silver up. And the idea is to get it to the correct temperature and then we'll quench it in water. You don't want to get it too hot though, or it'll reticulate or it'll deform on the surface of the coin. So what I like to do is look for a, a nice orange flame coming off. And it's best to do this in a dark dark room so that you can see a dull red glow of the coin. Once you get comfortable doing that then and you, and you can notice when that orange flame comes off then you can uh, do it in a lighted room but I would highly recommend doing it in a darkened room until you get uh, comfortable doing it. And using a propane oxygen torch Go ahead and heat the coin to a dull red in a dark room, or a nice and a nice orange flame coming off the coin. We're just now getting the orange flame. Okay. Now we'll quench in water. And there is an annealed silver half dollar. So now the next step is we'll go ahead and punch a hole dead center of the coin. So here's the first of the four primary steps, and that's punching a hole. And it's important to get the hole centered in the coin. Now coins are they're not perfectly round. They're off by a few thousandths of an inch. Uh, but the more centered you can get it, then the better uh, it will be uh, for folding and also for reducing. Now the spacers are in the starter kit are designed for U.S. quarters, U.S. half dollar, and U.S. Morgan dollar. And I'll think I'll use a half inch uh, hole for the for this half dollar. And one trick that uh, actually Joshua Jane's taught me is. Um, to use a paper towel, if you fold it here uh, over the ring, this is not something you have to do, but it just helps to protect the coin and also make, makes a very secure fit of the uh, coin in the spacer and uh, in the uh, punch housing. So we'll place the, the, uh, the die, half inch die, into the base of the punch here. Make sure that the uh, now, shiny side is up. You want you want the cutting edge to be sharp. Um, on on the other side, you'll see the uh, the size marked on the on the die, and uh, but there'll be a slight concave uh, shape. You want that flat side up. Let's place it in there, and we'll go ahead and put. Uh, just a piece of paper towel on top of the coin to help protect that detail. You can also put some tape on the base of the uh, top of the punch housing. That will also protect the, any, uh, the detail of the coin. And we'll go ahead and punch the hole. I like to also place uh, burr life on the cutting edge of, of the punch. Uh, that will allow it to stay sharper for a longer period. 
I like to just punch it uh, a few hard strokes and then lighter strokes afterward because you just need the punch just to go through. You don't have to drive it all the way home. You can see there it's perfectly protected. Uh, you have the paper towel here that'll protect that. Now we'll use a, a dead blow hammer. And we can just gently tap uh, the punch out um, off the coin. I like to grab the base of the uh, punch here and just lightly tap that out and there we go. Perfectly centered hole in the half dollar. So there's step number one. Now step number two, we'll take a deburring tool and uh, take that sharp edge off of the coin, of, off the hole uh, on the inside of the coin there. I like to keep the shavings because it is silver. And after you make a lot of these coin rings, you'll have quite a bit of shavings. And also the plug that is inside of the die. Now those will be punched out as you continue to, to punch coins. Those plugs will be will be driven through the, the base of the of the punch here. So there we go. Now we're ready for step number two. And that's folding. So the coin is annealed. Uh, hole punched in the center of the coin, deburred, beveled uh, the hole, and now we'll go ahead and start to fold the coin. Okay, so included with the starter kit is the uh, 1.3 uh, by 1.4 inch die at 17 degrees, and I like to use this to start the fold for a half dollar in the 1.3 side, and we'll go ahead and place that in there, and use the steel starter cone to begin the folding process. Now this does the first initial fold so that the steel cone will take up the brunt force of the fold and will uh, prepare uh, the coin for the plastic cones which will not harm the detail of your coin. So now we'll go to the 1.2 die And recognize that as the coin is being folded, it is work hardening. So it will need to be annealed um, here shortly. But uh, and the idea with the cone with the cones is that if it fits, it'll work. And you might hear me say that quite a bit. Um, but that's the idea with these tools: is that if it fits, it'll work. So if the cone uh, cone is a little bit too tall to fit under here, then you can use a, a larger die or a smaller cone. That way you can uh, use, basically make any ring, any coin uh, that's available into a ring. So I can feel it getting uh, work hard, so I'm going to go ahead and anneal uh, this again, and then we'll continue folding. Okay, so fresh, fresh anneal on the coin, so it's nice and soft again. Uh, we'll see if it goes into the next size down of the die. It does not, so we'll keep it in the 1.2. And maybe I'll try a, one larger size cone. Looks like that'll work just fine. Go ahead and continue folding. Now the idea is to get the uh, coin up against the, the um, cone there, so uh, that way it's folded completely at the 17 degrees. And you can see here we bottomed out, hit the top of the die, but we still need to go a little bit further. So you can either go to a larger cone or just add a spacer and finish the fold. And there we go, nice and snug. It's touching, so we are good to go. And so there's step number two, a folded coin. Now we'll go to step number three and stretch it out. Now for this step, I like to use a simple paper towel to help protect the detail of the, um, of the coin. Um, there's a gentleman, uh, Jason Samples, that uh, came up with this idea and it's just brilliant. Um, I tried different techniques and um, it, uh, this seems to be the way to go. It's nice and cheap and works very well. So I like to, for half dollars, I like to fold it over um, once for two ply and then basically place it on the top here and press down. That way you get paper on the inside of the ring and that'll protect it. So very simple, uh, easy to use. Um, oh, 
And we also want to see what size we have. And I like to use um, the narrowest part of the ring always for sizing. So right now it's the cut side. And it's looking like it's about seven and a quarter. So let's go for a size, oh, size, let's say size 10 um, uh, for our, our target size. So what we want to do now is stretch the ring past our target size for a half dollar about two to three times, depending on the final shape that you like. We'll go for a little bit straighter, straighter of a wall uh, coin, coin ring. So we'll go to about a, overstretch to a size 12 for a target size of 10. So I've got a little ways to go. And I haven't annealed it yet, so I, I'm, I'm very conscious of the uh, how hard the silver is and do not want to go past the breaking point. And this takes some time to get the feel. Like I, I feel it hardening right now, so I'm going to go ahead and stop. And I'll go ahead and anneal again. That's a size 10 there, so I still want to go two more sizes, but I'm not going to take a chance. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, anneal. Okay, so finished annealing. Um, I'm, I'm just cutting that out just to save, save some time for the video, but i got a fresh anneal on there, so we're nice and soft again. I'll press this down one more time. We're going for about two more sizes, larger. Again, just takes a little bit of practice to kind of get the feel for it. And there's a size, that's about a size 12 right there. I can a little bit touch more. Oh, and I like to have the reed side up uh, when doing this because we're trying to we're trying to get the cut side of the coin opened up and caught up with the with the reed side. And then when we reduce, we'll we'll put the reed side, reduce the reed side down and then final shape on the cut side of the of the ring. Okay, we'll call that good. So now I've work hardened it again. So I'll anneal one more time, and then we'll start to reduce and shoot for our target size. Okay, here we go. Uh, the ring is uh, folded, stretched, and now annealed. So now we're going to go to our final step and reduce it uh, to, this, to the shape and size that uh, we want. Now you'll see it's a little bit uh, wobbly couple low spots, couple high spots. Um, that's that's to be expected uh, because mainly because uh, coins are thick and thin in different locations. So they'll they'll bend faster, bend slower as they're folded and and stretched. Um, now with the reduction dies, I found that this actually helps to uh, straighten the ring out um, because it'll it'll uh, press down first on the part that is in, in contact and then it will conform to a, 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 a even uh, look. Now if you still have issues though you can, what I like to do is put it back on the stretcher and stretch it back out and then reduce it down again. Kind of like, like kneading dough uh, to work out air pockets. You're kind of kneading the ring back and forth, stretching and reducing to work out any uh, defects in the uh, shape of the, of the ring. So. Let's get started. So again, if it fits, it works. So we're just looking for a die that will fit the ring and allow uh, the ring to be pressed down. So this is a 1.117 degree. And we'll go ahead and begin reducing. I like to tap the ring to make sure it's nice and level in the die and do short strokes. And you can take it out and look at it and decide. I like to do several short strokes to make sure everything is looking good and it, it is looking good it, um, that little uneven, unevenness is working itself out and I'm also looking for uh, where the ring is making contact with the die I don't want to go up too far and take out any detail so so the 17 degree die is nice because it allows, especially for the larger coins and harder coins, it allows less force to be uh, needed to, to reduce the, uh, the ring. So I'm going to check the size here. We're at 10 and a half. So we're getting close already. I'm going to flip it around, do a little press on the cut side. Not going to take too much. So 
looking good. Now we still have a little bit of deformity here. Now this is going to basically <laughs> rely on you and how critical you want to be. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stretch this back out and then reduce again just to get it just right. Get down a little bit further. Now I feel it work hardening so I'm going to go ahead and kneel and reduce a little bit more and just see if I can work that piece out right there. Okay, a little more. I like to put my finger right next to the ram, not under it obviously, but uh, next to it so I can feel how far it's pressing. I'm not relying on my visual, you know, on, on sight, but uh, rather feel. So, let's see. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stretch it out back to the size 12. So we'll fold this. So I'll, I'll stretch it out to a size 12 and then we'll start reducing again. So we're, we're neat, we're uh, stretching, reducing to help uh, uh, make this uh, perfectly symmetrical. Okay, so now we're back to a size 12. So we've stretched it back out and I've, and I've also annealed it now so it's nice and soft, size 12. Um, and now I'm measuring the reed side because we've caught the, the cut side up to the reed side and now the reed side is going to be the narrowest part of the ring because it's thicker on the reed and thinner on the uh, cut side. And a lot of questions always arise like, well, I, I'm trying to get the, the size the same on, on both sides and you just can't because um, without it being not looking symmetrical, uh, the reed side will always be, will always be uh, narrower and the cut side um, larger when the ring is, is uh, symmetric in shape. And I actually like to wear the reed side on the back of the finger inside that groove actually fits very, very com comfortably. So, okay, we're size 12, target size 10. We'll start reducing again. So I'm gonna take it out and look at it, make sure everything is going like it should, which it is. Your size is about ten and three quarter. And flip it over now. I'm getting close to the size ten and yeah, ten and a quarter. Now I still have a little bit of material to take off on the inside. I'm going to use the deburring tool for that, just so it fits more comfortably on on a finger. I'm going to go ahead and reduce the cut side a little bit. That's looking really good. Ten and a quarter. I'm going to go ahead and deburr. side as well while I'm here. While they're trying to save the shavings. And just to soften up from the deburring I like to take a file or um, you can use a flex shaft uh, which works really well. Uh, there's also some other tools uh, available but uh, I kind of like the idea of not using, being able to make uh, coin rings without the need of electricity. That way you can make these at farmer's market or craft fair and not, not require any uh, electrical equipment. So, And again, this is basically up to the maker on how they want their finished ring to look. And I'll also take, while I'm here, Take that sharp edge off the outside of the cut part of the uh, ring. The die will actually help soften that up, especially on the reed side. But I'm just like to touch that up a little bit. It's looking really nice. I'll go a little further. I'm gonna feel for that work hardness again. Feels pretty soft, so we got a bit more room to go. Looking nice. About ten and a quarter. I'll go ahead and use some uh, 
blocks here, sanding and buffing blocks to polish that out a little bit more. It is kind of nice to, to leave the work hardness in, in the ring as you finish. That's size 10 right there. So we are done. That turned out really nice. Um, I, I do like to leave a little bit of the work hardness in the ring. That way it won't wear as quickly uh, for a person wearing it. Uh, you can see no detail was, 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 uh, was uh, damaged. Uh, so we have 100% uh, detail on the on the ring and now it's just final finish so I will take uh, some acetone and wipe wipe this down and then we'll go ahead and do a patina in black max and do a final polish on it okay so we'll take a little bit of acetone and just place some on a little bit of, on, a, on a paper towel and we'll just clean that uh, clean that ring up Real nice. Now the acetone is, is nice because it, it takes off any grease, oil from, from your fingers, uh, and will not leave a residue. So I like to use that. It is extremely flammable though, so make sure and cap it when you're done and put it safely out of the way of any uh, open flame. So we now have a ring that we are ready to patina and do final polish on. Okay, so here's the Black Max. Uh, this is, I found, to be the best in getting a nice dark patina on, on the ring, so you have a um, contrast of light and dark. It really pops the detail. You don't have to do it. If you don't want to, you can do a high polish. Uh, and it will wear off over time, so you have to let the customer know that the patina will only last for so long. Um, and rings wear down. The, the metal will wear off over time. Just depends on how active the person is that's wearing it. Now this is a very strong acid so it's good to uh, wear protective clothing. Again, eye protection and I should probably put some gloves on just in case and make sure that when you're done using it uh, you put it back into the bottle and store it away from your tools because the acid can be very oxidizing. Okay, we're ready. So let's go ahead and put her in there. I'll have to just let it sit for a while. And then we'll rinse it in uh, clean water. There we go. It's like a pretty good. Pretty good patina. And what I've found, what I like to do is uh, take the uh, buffing blocks here um, for nails. Uh, now this one here is a very, very fine um, grit, and then this one's actually no grit, it's a polishing. Um, I like to just polish it out first. That seems to help set it in. Out of the way, <laughs> and then come come in with the uh, the slightly coarser side, and just very lightly hit the high points of the ring. And you can use the corners to get into a smaller detail if you just want to hit one portion of the ring. Uh, make sure the sun's nice and bright, the rays. Let's see. There's your hand, the flag, the stars. 
There's your face, the branch, and then get the letters of liberty, and then in God we trust, right there. And if you want to, if you, if it's not quite as dark as you like, you can take it and put it back into the Black Max and do like a second coating of it. But I kind of like this. It looks nice. And then for the inside, I'll take uh, some 4 aught or 5 aught steel wool and very lightly just take take the, the patina off the high points on the inside of the ring. And then I'll actually take one of these and, t and uh, tear off either side of this and use that on the inside. And again, there's lots of different ways to do this. This is just one of the steps that I, or one of the processes that I found that I like. And I changed it up too. I'll try something different. Um, if it works, then I'll maybe adopt that for a while. If it doesn't, then I'll move on to something else. Um, but I'm, I'm constantly trying to, you know, make it, make better and better rings, so. But I think the starter kit is a really good kit to start out with. You'll be able to do the U.S. quarters, half dollars, and Morgan dollars. And then there's other spacers available uh, for other coins. You can even get custom ones made if it's a really oddball coin. Uh, and then also larger punches and smaller punches for the uh, self-centering punch kit that you can get uh, 5 eighths, 3 quarter, all the way down to a quarter inch. And then also the 25 degree dies, which I like to use for more of a, if I want to get a more of a rounded shape on the ring, like a fat tire look, uh, then I'll use that. So now I'm using the, the gray side of the uh, buffing block and now the white side for the final buff. And again, this is personal preference. So at this point, I'll just grab a polishing cloth with no, no uh, abrasive on it, but just do a final polish. And I like to use Renaissance wax at the very end which I don't seem to have <laughs> at the moment, but uh, it's available at RioGrande.com. Um, it's great stuff, a little pricey, but it puts a really nice luster on the finished product. So, but this block here is really nice as well. So that's the size 10, 1943 Silver Walking Liberty coin ring. Um, but you can see there, I think it turned out very nice. So, let's see if it fits over the glove. Nope, doesn't fit. <laughs> I'm ten and a half. There we go. There it is. Beautiful silver coin ring made with the starter kit. And again, you can do quarters, half dollars, and Morgan dollars with the with the kit. Well, there it is, guys. I hope you liked it. Uh, that's me making a, a coin ring uh, using the starter kit, so I think it's a great place to start if you're getting into coin rings. So the starter kit, the uh, ring stretcher, Durson ring stretcher, and a few other uh, smaller tools, you'll be able to make uh, coin rings out of quarters, half dollars, and Morgan dollars. So, uh, tools are available at jasonsworks.com on, on my Etsy shop also at riogrande.com. They're carrying the tools and have, it's a wonderful, wonderful shop that they have. Every tool you could ever imagine. And people there are super nice, super knowledgeable, and they'll, they'll help you if you have any issues. But also contact me uh, through Etsy if you have any questions. So thanks for your time and see you soon. Bye.